have not received any petitions. If anyone has one, please step forward. No? Uh, approval of minutes, April 5th. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the April 5th meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And report to Council. Uh, Council President McCracken. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple things here this evening. One, the Belmar Historical Society and Union Fire Company held an open house on April 9th, Saturday, April 9th, from 1 to 3. Had an opportunity to uh, attend that. Um, those volunteers with the Historical Society do a fantastic job and uh, are looking forward to uh, this year being Belmar's 150th anniversary. Have other events planned this year to celebrate our uh, anniversary. And uh, just wanted to thank them for hosting the open house and allowing the citizens of Belmar uh, to come and, and view all the good work that they do. Secondly, uh, the Shade Tree Commission, the seed leaking giveaway will be this Saturday, uh, April 23rd, in the morning from 9 to 12 at the corner of 10th and Main, right there by Taylor Hardware. Uh, anybody who would like uh, a seedling can come to the seedling giveaway uh, and have some seedling trees to plant in their yards. There is an educational program scheduled in honor of Arbor Day for the Belmar Entry Elementary School on April 29th in the morning for the fourth graders. That will be held at the Belmar Library. Um, an education event will be held and uh, trees will be planted in the planters on the, the library uh, lot over there. And then uh, a similar uh, program will be held on May 5th for the fourth graders at St. Rose Elementary School. Thank you. Councilor Brown. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. All right, I have a, a big report. Second week of the month is a big one for me. Uh, Tuesday night I went to the Harbor Commission meeting. Um, we've been talking about how we need to do some repairs uh, on the electric on some of the docks. Bid specs are being prepared for that. Uh, and they should be out in a couple of weeks. And uh, hopefully we get bids we can use, uh, I guess, by the end of May. And the work should definitely get done during the summer. We're also looking for the most cost-effective approach to dredging the marina. We definitely need to dredge it. Um, and it's, we're looking into, uh, rather than trying to do the whole thing in one season, which is a, a big permitting process, very expensive and lengthy process, we're looking at the possibility of doing uh, seasonal um, like, like maintenance dredging, where we don't do the whole marina, we do a certain part of it because those permits are easier to get and they're cheaper. So we're looking into that. Uh, Wednesday, it was for the, should have been a tourism commission meeting, but it was canceled for lack of form. I want to apologize for that. There are a lot of people were, uh, there are a lot of people really concerned. They want to see the budget for tourism, and as well as I'm one of those people. So the next meeting is uh, Wednesday, May 11th at 5:30 here. And uh, really looking forward to seeing that happen. Uh, Thursday, the Environmental Commission. So I have a lot of stuff to talk about here. Um, the Environmental Commission. They had their meeting. Uh, the Treasure Trail, the podcast walking tour of the town is coming right along. It's uh, the website is almost done. It looks really nice. Uh, they've been trying to do a, a, a range of demonstration of uh, electric leaf blowers and electric lawn equipment um, for residents and for for professionals because we've heard interest from both groups uh, we're having problems finding we we uh, they approached corporate for some of the large uh, equipment makers that didn't really work out so now they're actually going to try getting in touch with some of the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot that are distributors that might be a little more receptive to the idea of coming out and, and pitching their products uh, to people who might buy them so we're really looking forward to that um, big thing was uh, yesterday, the Colleen Sullivan Paulus, who's a member of the Environmental Commission, arranged for a tour for the, uh, for the Environmental Commission members to go to Mazza Recycling that we're using for our recycling now. So I have a lot of information to share with you all. And I also wanted to uh, thank Colleen, um, Ed Lippicott, the chair of the Environmental Commission, Lou 
Fierro, Diane Ballou, and my wife Mary Brennan is an alternate, and very especially Charles Vanderlin, who is our DPW recycling coordinator. He was a huge help. He went on on the tour with us. I got to tell you, Mass Recycling is a very impressive operation. They only opened April of 2020, so you can see why we haven't heard that much about it. Um, it's a $15 million facility that sorts everything. And all that stuff we told you about, only ones and twos and take off the caps and all that other stuff, that's all out the window and you're going to be so happy about this. Basically, they said any hard plastic at all, not just ones and twos, but fives. Um, if you go to mazarecycling.com and follow what to, um, what to recycle, they have a whole very nice list. Um, and the number five containers are the most common things. They're the clear plastic clamshells that your strawberries and blueberries and your eggs come in. Recycle those. Uh, the, the, the food containers that you get your leftovers in and your Chinese food, the, the black things with the clear lids, recycle all that. Leave your caps on your bottles, your yogurt cups, your margarine tubs, even your K coffee pods. Just rinse them out and they're recyclable now any kind of hard plastic. But one thing they really can't take is plastic bags and any kind of plastic film, which you can still recycle at supermarkets. They all have receptacles where you can put that stuff in. Um, cans, aerosol cans, cardboard. You can recycle dirty pizza boxes with these guys. You don't have to separate that out. That goes right with the cardboard. They were they, they said that a bunch of times. It was like, yeah, really, okay. Um, And one of the reasons I'm encouraging everybody to recycle as much as you can is because the more we send to recycling, which only charges us $79 a ton, the more we save rather than sending it to the landfill, which charges us $90 a ton. It's a clear savings for our residents, so I encourage everybody recycle as much of that plastic as you can. Clean aluminum foil, uh, all kinds of cans. They even talked about oil bottles. You know, I mean, you got to try to clean them out, but they can recycle those too. Um, it was really something. And it was really great that Charlie Vandalin was there because every time the people from Mazza would, would explain something to us, Charlie could explain how we are doing that in Belmar. Like, this is what we do with this, and this is how we do that. You know, it was really very helpful for the, the Environmental Commission members to hear from Charlie as well as the people at Massa to realize that Belmar knows what it's doing as far as recycling. Uh, okay. I was, just, I was just really, it was really impressive. It, it was a really impressive operation. I, yeah. Okay, so that's all that. Earth Day is the 22nd. There's lots of events. You go, all you got to do is Google Earth Day 2022 and you'll find something to do around here if that's what works for you, and most importantly, uh, I know this is going to actually go into effect after our next meeting, but I want to start telling people the state bag, plastic, single-use plastic bag ban is going to go into effect on May 4th. Now, that's not just those plastic bags, it's also styrofoam food containers, and if a restaurant's going to give you a container to take your food home, it can't be styrofoam. Um, You've seen a lot of coverage. If you have any questions, you can ask me after the meeting. I don't want to take your time. There's a lot of media exposure about this. I must congratulate the local newspapers and uh, the radio stations. They are definitely talking this up because it's going to be a big change for us all. I just want to make sure everybody's ready. And this, this, the state statute will supersede Belmar's. In Belmar, we made the decision to allow, um, you know, quote unquote, recyclable plastic bags, things like that. The state's not doing that. There's no single-use plastic bags at all, whether it says recyclable or not. They're not taking that. Uh, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just have a couple things. Um, the yard sale will be, uh, the town-wide yard sale is going to be May 14th and 15th. And um, starting May 30th, we're going to start collecting uh, donations for the Ukraine refugees. Um, Oh, it's April 30th, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're going to do it for a week. Everything is going to be dropped off at the library. 
uh, up on our website there's going to be a whole list of uh, things that um, they really need over there so if anybody's interested in donating to that and dropping it off at the library you can go up on our website and see all the items that they that they need uh, Anna Cavaluzzi is going to be uh, spearheading it and then uh, we're going to try to get it out to them so uh, if you can go to the website it starts uh, April 30th and they'll finish up collecting on May 7th and that's all I have all right um, we'll move on to public session on any resolution items anyone from the public would like to speak on a resolution listed on the consent agenda please step forward state your name and address yes Katrina good evening everybody Katrina Clapsis B Street okay I'm trying to understand our municipal budget and um, this is the amendment which is um, authorizing the temp additions to the temporary. Could somebody explain to me in lay terms what exactly this amendment is doing? Uh, well, since we don't have a, a budget and there's different things that come up before our budget starts, uh, this is from the finance team, that they, they, uh, they request that we put in uh, additions to our temporary budget. So. Um, I'm not sure of the exact thing that they they uh, they were looking for. Uh, uh, Business Administrator Kirschbaum, you know um, what 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 the extra uh, funding was for in our temporary budget? Just to continue operations for the borough, uh, because we don't have the budget passed yet. Uh, to make sure that we can continue to move forward with all the plans for the beach and everything like that. So, so, so this is a standard practice, like every year. It's standard until, until the budget's adopted. There's a temporary budget. The finance team looks at everything and they make uh, adjustments as they see fit to make sure that we continue to move the borough forward. Right. So we, we operate on a temporary budget until the budget's passed. And so that's from January 1st until, until the budget's the passed. Budget passed, which is going to be when? I don't should have a date yet. We should be introducing in. next meeting and then 28 days after that. Okay. Okay, we'll, 28 we'll days after yeah, There'll it's... be a hearing and then uh, it'll be, yeah, we'll be passing the budget then. Okay. So probably the, like the first meeting in June. Okay, and the budget runs from July to July. When does the budget run? From January to January? Yeah, yeah, January okay, January. so this is, we, just so I understand. So as of January, these things are increases from the budget from last year. Are they increases that we needed more money for these? You just need to plan budgetary items to move forward so we can continue to run the borough. So that's why the temporary budget is put in place. Okay. They, they're working on the numbers for the overall budget for the for the okay. full year. Because last year's budget was over January first, well, December thirty first, right? And December thirty first. So this is from then to the okay. All yes. right. Okay. Thank you. See, this is this is good. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thought I had more to that. Thank yes, Linda. Linda Sharkas, 4th Avenue. Good evening. Um, I just would like to comment about the Eastport project, and I'm very happy to see we have a developer who's come in, um, met the criteria for seaport redevelopment, being only three stories, having sufficient ground level parking, and best of all, that they plan to have condos. I think we scored a, a big win with this application. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, April. I have a motion to close the public session. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion to approve the resolutions as listed on the consent agenda? Make the motion. Second. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Mayor Walsper? Yes. Councilman McCracken? Yes. Uh, we have we don't have any ordinances, so next is a public session. If anyone would like to speak, please step forward, state your name and address. Yes, Joe. Hey, good evening, Your Honor. Joe McAvoy, 700 Main Street. Uh, I got something for everybody today. I wanted to speak a month ago, but I was too angry to speak, so I'll try to keep it as civil as possible tonight, even though civil's a root word of civilian. I was a Marine, so 
It's going to be a little difficult, but I'll try. First, Mr. Kirschenbaum, I got a question for you. The mayor spoke a few times in the last few months about the expense of running all these events. You know, all the tourism events, the seafood fest, all those events. You have a, a director of special operations who's in charge of that, and we haven't had these events for the last two years. Was he we have had events over the past few years. During COVID, we scaled them back. Uh, last year, we had events. We had time to discover some of those things. We're now getting into uh, the seafood festival. So all. So he's still getting his part-time eighty thousand dollar a year salary, even though we're at limited schedule. Who? He's uh, whoever your director of special operations is. What's your question? Your director of special events. I guess it wasn't you know a big enough term. So I'm still looking for a guy in a suit and tie with jumping scuba wings walking around Borough Hall. My question is. You're a capitalist, supply and demand. Are we still supplying him with a full salary, even though there's a yes, less because he, demand for uh, Joe, I can answer that. Yes, because he does not only do, uh, uh, he oversees tourism, he oversees the construction department, he oversees a lot of other things in the borough that, that keep moving along. So, yes, he, uh, he is. Okay. And, and he just shifted different areas in the borough to keep going. Fair enough. Council President McCracken. It's the third time I'm here now, I'm talking about the flag in the last six months. All right. Now I like you. You might not think I do, but I do. You're a smart guy. You're an intellectual guy. I like how you think out of the box, and you tell us how you think when you vote, and I appreciate that. I respect you. But this is the third time I'm here. Now some days the flag's up. Some days the flag's not up. Some days the flag should be at half mast, and it's not. It wasn't at half mast when our congressman passed away from Alaska, longest serving congressman in, in history. Flag wasn't at half mast. Flag wasn't even up that week. Then Madeleine Albright passes away, our first female secretary of state. No flag at half mast. All right. I, I know. I know the lake flag was at half mast. Um, the flag's not even up there right now. Flag should be up there every day. Listen, Mayor Walsh. Yeah, George, George, George from our DPW handles putting the flag up and down, so he can answer that question. He's here. Yeah, you can talk, George, because you you put the flag up and down uh, on all of them. The line fixed flag up for I forget what it costs at the money of the big flag. It's like a thousand. I don't know the quote. George, can you continue and then I'll just finish. Charlie kind of tells me, because he knows what Dr. Lincoln and I know what Dr. Lincoln is. We deal with each other. I deal with one school in the way and the flag. And we don't know how to call school. I even help the school with the flag. You know, the lines are pinned in that key fix. I'm not being rude. And I do, you know, I know you're a lion, I'm just a, but I'm very proud of being in there. This is the only place the flag doesn't fly every day. It's, and I took it down yesterday. George, there's a storm flag for high winds. It's got a four foot, two inch hoist, oh, okay. and it's got an eight foot flop. All right? And it's a lot easier to put up during so storm conditions. That's what they're made for. What happens is they have a policy in town that if the flags are up in high winds, they get shredded. Uh, as a matter of fact, when the wind uh, got uh, two weeks ago, the Memorial Phil flag totally disengaged from the pole. Hook and ladder fire department came, got it out of the trees right away, and we kept the flag down, and they fixed the line. The Bro uh, DPW has a policy that if the flags are going to be uh, torn and shattered, they don't put them up. That's why sometimes the flags run up. If we have nice weather, like last night we had a northeastern storm, the flags run up. So we're doing it. We have a lot of flags in town. We make sure that we, they don't get destroyed. We don't want the flags destroyed. That's the reason George puts his heart and soul into getting those flags at half mass when we get notified by the, the government to do so. And DPW has a policy that they won't put them up if we have a certain mile per hour wind uh, forecast. So that's why it happens. I came over here on personal business to the cop shop the day after Madeline Albright passed away. And I told the dispatcher, while I was here on personal business, I said, while I'm here, you know, I'd like to tell you the flag out front's very politely, the 
flag out front, supposed to be at half mast till Sunday. You know what they told me? You want to take a guess? No? They told me, well, you got to go around front. The other side of the building handles that. Wrong answer. Google it, storm flag. Four feet, two inch hoist, and an eight foot fly goes up in a storm. This is our building, Mr. Kirschenbaum. This is the people's building. You're a temporary employee here, okay? This isn't a dictatorship. It's not even a de democracy. It's a constitutional republic, all right? And we follow these laws, these codes. U.S. flag code is federal law. Thank you. If you don't understand, I'll bring down some real warriors from the VA with missing limbs to oh, talk to you about. Oh, I understand completely where okay. you're coming from. Do they teach you about flag code in the police academy? I know you dislike cops. I I I, I no, follow. No, I dislike cops. I follow that, but my godfather was a cop. I tried to my explain uncle, to you why the flags weren't up. One seventy-two. I tried to explain to you why the flags weren't up. You don't know up. anything about it. I know. No, you know well, Joe, we're gonna we're gonna look into those those yeah. flags, Joe. We're yeah, gonna take, we're gonna take a look into. It. There's no sense of arguing. We don't, put the flag, we, we don't put the flags up or down, but we'll, we will take a look at it. You're bringing patriotism back to Belmar. That's what you said, September 11th. Patriotism never left Belmar. Not when the, we left for the global war on terror, for active duty. If you're bringing patriotism back to Belmar and you stand for freedom, like you said, you need to learn the difference between freedom and liberty. There's a difference. My next question is to you, Mayor Walsover. We had a proposal for the development on the corner of 6th and Main. Greg Kapalko comes in, makes a great proposal. He's within all the codes, everything. Beautiful. In and out, nice and clean. Now, they made a proposal on the corner of, of 8th and Main. The uh, church property, the empty lot, on the corner, they brought their lawyers, they brought their architects, they brought everybody. They were turned around and sent out of here after 20 minutes because they had angle parking and they didn't have, I believe, uh, storefronts on the first floor. They didn't meet the requirements. They, didn't, they, didn't meet they, the had, they had under, uh, under, undersized apartments. Exactly. I was here. Yeah. So They got sent out with their tails between their legs mm -hmm. in less than 20 minutes. Meanwhile, on 12th Avenue, you got a place that they're proposing that's in violation of 11 different codes, one by 835%. And I came to a zoning board meeting, my first one, and it was a circus, literally a circus, complete with a clown show, a lawyer dressed in a red velvet jacket with sequins. And their, the residents had to hire their own lawyers because the government won't help them out. How does that get through? How does, how does something like that get rejected for angle parking and no, no shops on the first floor? But something like 12th Ave, they've been wasting manpower, and lawyers, and money for years. Now, it probably didn't... Our own lawyer that, that represents the borough of Belmar, Kevin Kennedy, who is a zoning board attorney, and that is a board that is listening. They have made a decision on that. People, Property owners have the right to come and and try to pitch their case. Now that it'll be up to that board to make that decision. And on. that case never got kicked out after it's ten different violations. But that case on Eighth and May got kicked out for two small violations. Well, and it didn't I get kicked, kicked out. out. It didn't something. get kicked out. I told them what was wrong, and we weren't we weren't moving forward on it because that is in the seaport redevelopment. The place on Twelfth Avenue was not in the seaport redevelopment, so it goes to zoning board. Okay. And if I could just add something, Mr. Mayor, um, I apologize. The zoning board is a separate autonomous entity that's separate and apart from the borough council. So the borough council actually doesn't have any authority whatsoever to regulate or control what the zoning board does in that instance. They're governed by their oath to uphold the borough ordinances, and how they decide to rule is subject to what's known as arbitrary and capricious standard. So how they rule, you have objectors and you have the borough attorney who is sit who's supposed to sit there and offer advice to the zoning board members. But in terms of this uh, mayor and council's control over them, it's 
slim than none. All the mayor and council at this point, they're, they could amend ordinances, they could make things a little bit more stricter, which the zoning board would be under the oath to comply with. However, within the municipal land use law, under 40 colon 55D-70, C1, C2, and then also all the D variances, they are entitled to apply for relief from the zoning ordinances, but it's up to that zoning board's determination to decide either yes to grant them or no to grant them, and unfortunately to the mayor and council, their hands are completely tied. Okay, so it has a certain plasticity to it, even when it's way out of... <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Thanks, man. Mr. Brennan. Mr. Brennan, I actually like you. You might not think I do, but I do like you. But years ago, I was censored on the Belmar Democrats Facebook page. Okay, It's a public, public Facebook group, Belmar Democrats. Okay, You can't block anybody from a public social media group. I brought this to your attention, remember, a couple years ago. Okay. You straighten the problem out for me. Okay. There was a Supreme Court ruling three years ago. Supreme Court ruling. Okay. So they censored me. I didn't pick up the phone and call the ACLU. I talked to you and you straightened it out. Now, the Democratic candidates, since you're the lone Democrat up here, they announced their candidacy. I went over to the Belmar Democrats page so I could share it, right? with the residence group, and lo and behold, I was blocked again the second time. Now, I brought it to John Walsh's attention, okay, and he fixed it in about two and a half minutes. I don't know who's doing it, but it needs to stop, because once again, this is the second time, okay? Now, I don't know if Bill and Hillary Darty are still, in, still pulling strings with your party in town, over there from Inlet Terrace, but it, it's not going to happen again. If it happens again, there's going to be big trouble. I, I, I'm, sorry that happened. Each other? I'm sorry that happened. I, it wasn't anything I did. Okay. I'm not an administrator for that page or anything yeah. like that. So. so I'll show them the difference between force versus power. Okay. All right. Now, next, let's talk about the environment, since you're the environmental councilman. Let's talk about these electric backpack blowers and mm. all this electrical stuff, all right? I could drive my gas-powered car for another 35 years, okay? That's impressive. And, and I'm a pretty good mechanic, but, and I had a look, I'd have a lower carbon footprint than if I went out tomorrow, bought a brand new electric car and didn't drive it a mile. You understand that concept? Yes. Okay. Now. As far as noise, I mean, noise of, noise of your gas-powered blowers, I mean, they're making improvements. They're, they're clearing leaves. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's short-term stuff. If a neighbor has a problem with it, they can just go next door and say, hey, my wife just had a baby. Can you schedule landscapers a different time, this and that? You probably got a few people complaining, and now you want to go and reinvent the wheel. All right? Now, I live on the corner of 7... 7th and Main, right across the corner. I wish I could hear that backpack blower going on Saturday mornings now waking me up because that tree's gone. They had to cut the tree down. Probably one of the most beautiful trees on Main Street, and I miss it because it blocked the traffic noise, it cooled off the, the second deck, and I'd rather hear that backpack blower. I don't mind 2 in the morning getting waken up by the fire department because I know the alarm wakes me up, they're going to do some good. Same thing with the blowers. They're doing some good. They're landscaping. They're making improvements. They're giving Belmar a little curb appeal, which it needs. Okay? Now, you know, for you to tell all these working men they have to abandon their gas-powered blowers and adopt electric blowers, because you're probably ready to start an ordinance. I mean, it's a suggestion at first. No? No. Not? No. Okay. That's the idea because of trying having a demonstration yeah. and trying to attract people, you know, Attraction. Because the uh, workers have been bent over in this country enough by the national government. We don't need to get bent over by the local government. No, no one's trying to do anything like that. Right. I mean, respectfully, this is an issue that was raised by one of the commission members themselves, and the rest of the commissioners 
felt the majority of the commissioners felt it was worth exploring. Uh, Two-stroke engines are very, very highly polluting. Yeah. There's no question about it. And if we could stop using them, we would definitely lower the amount of uh, air pollution. And yes, noise is definitely part of it. But we're also thinking that, you know, given the price of gas, maybe now's the time to start encouraging people to look into an alternative. And, you know, if it gets to the point where an ordinance would make sense because most people are already doing it, fine. But right now, it's not like that. We're, right now, we're just looking for a vendor to come and do a demonstration. Okay. Fair enough. Because there's, if you want to know anything about renewable energy, okay, you can get in your car, go west on 33, down the road there, there's a place I can tell you anything you want to know about fusion, fusion energy, renewable energy, green energy, uh, Princeton University, that's the name of the place, right in the next county. They'd be glad to tell you anything about it. They're a world-class institution right over the border in the next county. All you have to do is pick up the phone and they'd be happy to help you. Now, I don't just complain, Mr. Brennan, I offer solutions. Mm -hmm. The most unpopular thing the mayor said that came to his desk since, his, since he's been here in charge was the bridge to nowhere to the wildlife refuge, correct? Right. Well. Everybody was against it. And I sent, you, I sent you a message. And I said, there's an easy solution to build a bridge to that island where the predators can't get over to the bird sanctuary and, and disturb anything, okay? You had a biologist from Rutgers who lives in town, another duty expert, who said the breeding season for waterfowl runs from March to October, all right? Mm -hmm. So I, I sent you a letter and I said, all you have to do is drive four rows of steel sheeting to the island, fill it with gravel, and keep it two feet below the water level. The cats can't get out there, the raccoons, the foxes, and when you want to service the island, you just drain the lake two feet, because they check the pumps anyway twice a year, and they wanted to service the island twice a year. It's a win-win situation. Did you ever bring that to the mayor's attention? Well, I, I, you know, I think that, that, that whole process was, we were looking for a grant, and, and it was I a beautification van, a grant for the town. It was pretty slim to none before we even, that we were even going to get it, but our, our engineer said, let's put it in, let's try it. You know, would it, so if we would have got the grant, then it would have went into a design stage, and we would have took right. a look at right. all those suggestions. Right. That's when it, that would have been but the time. The, when we voted it through, we were just we were we just we were looking for the grant, and uh, the time would have been immediately because the whole community was against the mayor on that, and he was looking for a solution. And he sat there and said, "They're going to give us two hundred thousand dollars. We have to figure this out." And I figured it out. That's my line of work, Doc Building. Didn't take me long to figure it out. Team, together everyone achieves more, right? Mm -hmm. How about teaching every adversary manners? You know, you got to work together, Democrats and Republicans. I don't care. I'm not up here campaigning. I'm not running for office. I could care who, I could care about the people that are going around town saying I was never in the Marine Corps, I didn't serve, accusing me of stolen valor. I could care less who it is. I could care less who the people are who are trying to hack into my email and send me viruses from defunct email accounts here at Borough Hall. I could care less, all right? I just want the local government to stop jerking us like the federal government. We really, we really should turn, change the address of 601 Main Street back to 601 F Street because we're really getting effed, all right? April. Let's see, let me just make sure I got nothing else for Councilman Brennan. The windmills, Councilman Brennan, real quick, the offshore windmills. Windmills are going to be obsolete five to ten years from now, okay? Thorium reactors are already popping up in India and China. They're, kick, they're, they're eating our lunch on that, all right? They're so much safer than uranium. The reason they haven't took off here in the United States is because the byproduct of uranium reactors is armor-piercing rounds, all right? It just serves a military-industrial complex, okay? 
Now I'm with you on this. They want to put the windmills offshore, out of sight, out of mind, and they want to put them on seamounts, which basically is, seamounts are the, they're like the rainforest of the ocean. They're like the lifeblood of the ocean, where all the life comes from, the smaller fish, the, the birds. Granted, I understand. House cats, building strikes, kill more birds, millions more birds than windmills do. But now you're going to push, put a bunch of salad shooters right up in the Atlantic flyway. So when all the migrating birds are coming down the flyway and going from Long Island across the New York, New Jersey bite every fall, it's going to be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Who's backing that? The oil companies. Yeah, the oil companies are backing the offshore windmills off the coast of New Jersey. Look it up. April, half-mast alerts, OK? It's a free widget you get on your phone. Comes right to your phone, it'll tell you when the flag needs to go to half mass so I don't have to walk across the street and tell the office or tell whoever doesn't give a crap. All right, it's simple. You make good money here, working here. It's a simple thing to do. Public Works is on the other side of town. God bless George, I know what he does for the town. He does far too much and they keep piling more things on, okay? It's a simple, free app, and it'll tell you when that flag needs to go to half mast. Google, storm flag. Okay, the flag should be up every day. It's a government, this is a government office. It should be up every single day. I like cops. I like you because you helped me out years ago when my car got bashed. You found the guy, the car was parked, it was a hit and run, you had two witnesses, and you took care of everything. You settled me down, and I appreciate that, and I respect you, and you guys have a tough job. But like I said, when I walk into the police, you know, police department, and I mention that to them, they should be picking up the phone. We'll fix that right now for you. It shouldn't be, oh, you got to go and talk to the other office about that. that. That shouldn't be the way it works. You know, I'm sure the chief, and I respect the chief too. I worked with her when I was on the water rescue team. Chief works hard. She's tough. She probably gets micromanaged to hell by a bunch of alpha males that were in the same line of work as her and think they could do the job better. So I feel for her. She's in a tough spot. But that's the wrong answer when you walk in the police station, nice and polite, and mention it to them, and then you're blown off and sent to another department. Shouldn't work that way. The head of DPW, is he here? Public Works? Okay, then I'll talk to you about it. The Port of Johns in front of the War Memorial, right on the main drag, leading right to the main memorial, 15 feet from the doggone flagpole during parade day. Wrong answer. You could have put them anywhere on that block. That's hallowed ground. There's men that march in that parade that look over to that memorial, couldn't even see it because of four Port of Johns blocking it. All right, how about thinking a little? thinking a little harder, a little more out of the box when it comes to respect, especially if you're the administration bringing patriotism back to Belmar. I heard how the mayor honored you for working all the overtime hours after September 11th. He mentioned that in his speech. He mentioned Charlie Vanderlyn. That's great. It's great what Charlie did. He's a hero. But war is when people are shooting at you when you're trying to do your job. War is when police officers, military police, are trying to handle 120 terrorists you just captured and trying to control the crowd, okay? Patrick, your turn. You're the last one, last but not least. U.S. flag code, Patrick. All right, brush up on it. Okay. <coughs> the thing we have in common, the two of us, we both know where all the bodies are buried in this town, okay? The thing we don't have in common, you have attorney-client attorney -client privilege. Me, I can start digging them up tomorrow. And the smell here at 601 Main Street would be worse than low tide on that mud flat two blocks away during an August fish kill at 100 degree weather. I'm, I'm sick of the disrespect for the flag. I'm sick of people not getting return phone calls. And I don't call the borough. I don't email the borough. If I have a problem, I just walk across the street, which I rarely do. 
because I know how things get done over here. So I, why bother? But it's got to stop, okay? This nice six months end of the year push, you know, now that's an election year, that's great. I hope stuff finally gets done. But if I have to start bringing some real warriors in here from the VA or the VFW with missing limbs to explain to them about U.S. flag code, which is federal law, it's not going to look good in the press. It's not going to look good during an election year. All right? You might think I'm arrogant. I'm not. He's arrogant. I'm audacious. There's a difference. Just like there's a fine line between force and power, between liberty and freedom. If you don't know them, you got to brush up on it. You're young, you're smart, and you can help. Okay? If they don't listen to you, that's fine. But that's your area of expertise, and you really should sit down with somebody and let them know. Because I'm sick of the mayor, the mayor's friends, coming up to me when I'm out drinking cutting into my drinking time, telling me that, you know, telling me that, oh, you're tearing the town apart, and I hear this is going on, and that's going on, and, and they want to talk to me and, and get together with a beer for, with me and the mayor outside of a council meeting. I said, no, I'd just rather do it here in public. I understand. I think you made your point. Yeah. And if there's anything, if there's anybody here, anybody watching this that doesn't think I'll say the same thing straight to their face, that I say in social media or here in this room, I'll be a block south of here at the local tavern after the meeting. First round's on me. Mr. Kirschenbaum, you look like you could use a drink right about now. What else? Yes, Mr. Kramer. Uh, Eugene Kramer, Fort be getting a, uh, uh, a, uh, a tax bill for May 1st, a revised tax bill. Uh, it's my understanding that the, the homestead rebate, uh, in other words, they don't give a rebate anymore, they give a credit. Are we going to get a revised tax bill before May 1st? The homestead rebate notice went out in the mail today. Okay, very good. Thank you. And I want to thank April. Uh, you know, with, with, uh, with this, uh, probably everybody noticed uh, uh, we're being exposed to fiber blight again in town. Uh, the cable companies all over the place. And uh, I requested from, from April uh, a uh, copy of their insurance uh, certificate, and she got that to me today. I'm glad to hear uh, that, uh, that both, you know, that th these people doing the work have liability coverage. Uh, I also wanted to thank uh, one of the officers, uh, Officer Jones. Uh, he was out there uh, with the people that are working with the t uh, cable company, and uh, he was the only one that uh, I could speak to, the only one that spoke English. Uh, and uh, uh, was able, uh, he, he helped out. Uh, I, I think we have to understand that when we have these people come into town and they're doing work, that about half of the utility poles in this town are on private property. They're along the rear property line, and uh, quite truthfully, I know my property in particular, they have no right of entry. I don't have any pole on my property. Maybe my neighbor might, maybe somebody down, down the block may have, one of their predecessors may have granted uh, a pole consent for utility installation. Uh, in, in any case, uh, I was glad to get the insurance policy because uh, my insurance company, uh, Conley Camping and Wright, I've had them since I've been in Belmar. Uh, every year they send me a notice saying that any contractor, no matter who it is, uh, to make sure that, uh, that uh, they, they supply you with the liability uh, insurance policy. And if they have any questions, they can call over to Conley Camping and Wright. Um, these people here, I'll be truthful with you, no personal protection equipment, unless a sombreros, a hard hat, uh, no, uh, uh, no safety shoes, no safety glasses. <laughs> and, and quite truthfully, I don't want them on my property. 
Uh, I was able, though, uh, talking to Officer Jones, he spoke to them and uh, uh, got them into the yard next door where the pole was actually located. And they, uh, they had no reason to enter my property whatsoever. Uh, so I, I wanted to thank both uh, April and uh, Officer Jones. Also, uh, old business uh, from the last uh, uh, from the last meeting. Uh, Bill Musto, uh, the DPW supervisor. I want to thank him. Uh, he got back to me real quick. Uh, Belmar does not fluoridate uh, our water. Uh, then I had something else here. Uh, because uh, I'm all in favor of this uh, uh, borough making an investment uh, with the EMS squad and uh, the proposed new building over at uh, 12th and Main. I think that's a, that's a great idea. Um, but you have to remember, I, I think this subject came up before when we were talking about um, a uh, volunteer or charitable organization as opposed to uh, uh, what will, will become borough employees, borough run. And uh, uh, for years, people in Belmar uh, made charitable donations uh, to the first aid squad. Unfortunately, obviously, it wasn't enough. But now here we are. Uh, before, we were able to uh, take a, a tax de uh, deduction for donating to that charitable organization. Uh, one of the problems that I see here uh, coming up, and you probably heard, uh, Supreme Court yesterday uh, decided uh, not to uh, eliminate the, uh, wouldn't approve a, a change in the uh, cap limit on uh, the state, state and local taxes. So we're going to be capped out, uh, and we are capped out at $10,000 uh, state and local tax uh, caps out at, at $10,000. But we're also entitled, even if you take standard deduction, we are entitled on the federal form to take another $300 uh, as a charitable deduction. Uh, now looking at my tax bill, we have a whole bunch of line items here included in the uh, tax bills that we get. We have municipal tax, we have school tax, we have county tax, we have a library tax, we have a health tax, uh, and we have an open space tax. I'm wondering, is there any problem with the expenses that are going to be incurred with an emergency medical services uh, squad uh, uh, being done by the borough, by the government, that why don't we have a separate line item uh, for emergency medical services. Um, other jurisdictions within the United States, medical services are tax deductible. Uh, and, and certainly here in town, uh, we incur the cost through our, you know, apparently we're going to incur the cost now with our municipal taxes. But the EMS squad, when they respond to a call or somebody uh, needs first aid, they don't ask whether they're a resident of Belmar, okay? Uh, this seems to me to be uh, uh, an item that we may still, even with if the salt tax cap stays in place, we may still be able to make uh, get at least $300 deduction for uh, financing uh, emergency medical services. Plus, as we get involved in partnering with other municipalities, wouldn't it be better that this be handled as a separate line item on our tax bill so that we can actually have a full grasp of what's involved here? Uh, I don't know what... Uh, uh, moving forward, I mean, that, that could be a possibility moving forward, but we're still trying to... Uh, we're still trying to put this this shared service program together, and uh, you know we're we're going through it in, in baby steps to make sure that we're doing everything right. That might be the case later on, um, but as of right now, it looks like all the municipalities will be handling 
uh, the way we're handling it within. So, but no, I get your point. Where and, and there's a lot of towns they they have separate fire uh, line items on the tax bill. They vote for those the the uh, what 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 the fire budgets or first aid budgets are going to be before they're put out there. But um, you know, maybe at some point we'll take a look at that. But that's up to the financial team to uh, really dissect it and see what's best for Belmore. Yeah, I, I just I just see it as uh, this may actually facilitate things, um, not change the tax paying pay my tax bill or anything like that. It's just a matter of tracking cost. Obviously, we're these costs now are going to be material. Uh, we're talking about real estate purchase. We're talking about you know equipment purchase. We're talking about salaries. Uh, I just think. Uh, in as much as we got one, two, three, four, five, six, six plus line items on our tax bill, why not just include one uh, for EMS? Or if you want to combine it, EMS and fire, then at least we have uh, uh, we have an accounting for it. And uh, uh, might want to even talk with the other municipalities as to whether they've given that some consideration. Uh, like I said. Even even with the, the uh, even if you take a standardized deduction on the federal form, and by the way, the state of New Jersey, uh, I don't remember the attorney general at the time. Uh, it was a gentleman, uh, I believe it was a seat. He wore a uh, uh, you know wore a, a, a turban on his head, but he had actually made uh, uh, and, and uh, I believe the Department of Community Affairs had put out uh, a memo about. Uh, a recommendation to municipalities of how they can uh, how they can do accounting for and perhaps uh, uh, the taxpayers would be, would be entitled of those say EMS costs as deduct about you know ninety percent of it or so uh, as as a deduction on their federal forms. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of you know people uh, working on this. Uh, with, with the cap on, on state and local taxes, uh, but thus far they don't seem to be making any progress. That's it. Anyone else? Yes, Trina. Thank you. It's like right in my face. Thanks. Uh, Katrina Klaus uh, B Street. Still at B Street, okay. Um, you know, I, I also went to the Historical Society open house and it was really cool and I had never really been in that building before. And yeah, they took me on a tour of the building itself with all the jail cells and the whole thing. It was really cool, something I had never realized. And as we were talking, we went upstairs and they took us to this front room and there's this huge room that they told us that was used to be they used to hold the municipal town hall meetings there which I thought was really quite cool and as we were talking I don't know why this popped into my head something I'd like you to maybe consider since it's our 150th anniversary um, maybe we could have a town hall meeting up in that building I think it would be great for the firehouse for the morale in the firehouse itself and it would just be a really neat thing. I, I don't, I'm not sure, I can't be the only person to never realize that, maybe longtime Belmar people, but I just think it would be a very cool thing. I'd like to know if you guys would just consider it, throw it out there and see if you would consider it. And Chief LaRusa told us that he would be more than happy to sponsor it and get involved with it. So I think they're all open to the idea. So thanks. Yeah, that, that could be a good idea for us as we get closer to the actual birthday. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes. Hello. Louise Germanario, 606 North Lake Drive. And I have a question with the roads. Um, one question is, 8th Avenue is a disaster. And I'm just curious as to, is there a plan to address the bumps? And that's like a roller coaster. 16th is no better. And I see some are being done and some aren't. Is there a plan or a program that we could at least see and meet and understand what the expectation is for a change? We have our engineer working on uh, the, the sewer, uh, water sewer plan, uh, along with the paving program. Now, I know 8th Avenue uh, uh, needs a lot of uh, sewer work down there, and uh, we're, 
that's going to have to be done first before we get the paving done. That you know, we got to open up the road and do that. So um, I don't know if he's going to be here at the next meeting. Uh, probably not to like either the June meeting. He's going to. They're working on uh, a, a plan for the water sewer and all the paving, and he's going to be here to explain well, what the procedure is and what we're going to start on first. And uh, it's basically a ten-year plan. But I know. We I talked mean, about 8th Avenue. Years, eighth Avenue. No, 8th Avenue is one of the main ones. That's oh, one yes. of our major problems with, with the sewer system. So that has to be opened up and uh, do that first, and then we'll get to the paving part and, of it. And I have another question that relates to that. So if you're coming east on 8th, and you're in front of the um, beach, what is it called? Brew house, whatever it is. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that whole traffic situation is just a disaster, especially in the summertime, and it really needs to be addressed. Like, I don't know why people are allowed to park in front of that restaurant and why there isn't three lanes, because if we had three lanes there, one for left, one for straight, and one for right, and nobody parked on that side, the traffic would move, and it would move so much better. It, 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 I'm telling you, in the summertime, it's an accident just waiting to happen every day, because nobody knows what to do at that turn when they're not from here. And so everyone's, you know, killing each other to get by there. So I, can, I can tell you this, that's that's the state highway right there, Route 71, and the state has been down, I think, we're, we're three years now. They, they have a whole plan to do just that, but we're still waiting. It's been all approved, then COVID hit, and so we're still waiting for them to come down. I have a, if I came, I had a call to uh, the state yesterday. I got a return call from them today. They're, we're on, we're on the uh, bubble to get that done. So I got a call into Megan uh, at uh, New Jersey DOT. I'll call her again tomorrow to see what the time frame is. But okay. it's a whole pedestrian uh, signals and uh, yeah. lane changes. And I think they even have a green arrow for uh, uh, making a left turn. Green arrows, yeah, lane. So. We're waiting. Uh, I had a, a complaint the other day from a gentleman that was walking down the street and almost got hit by a car. So yeah. we have been promised by the state. Uh, I'm waiting for a call. I, I, she called me back today. I'm going to call her back tomorrow. I hope to have a report of when they plan on doing it. Okay. I know we are on the radar. Right. But that uh, that whole intersection is controlled by the state because it's a state highway. Okay. Good to know, but I mean, it is really dangerous there. They know it. Yeah. They're, they're well aware of it. And we have them down here. We yeah. continually uh, call them. Okay, I have one more question. Nothing to do with the roads. <laughs> now I have a question about the geese. <laughs> Again, I live by the lake. And it's so bad, the waste that's created by these geese it's dangerous children playing on a lawn it cannot be safe for anybody something's got to be done i'm not sure what i know the other gentleman talked about something i wasn't sure if he was referring to this topic in a good way or a bad way because i wasn't following it so I, i'm sorry if i didn't understand that he already brought it up i'm not 100 percent sure what he was saying but we just have so much waste all over the place. You can barely walk. I mean, it's a walking town. That's what the lake is for. And I they know they clean, and I, I do appreciate the fact that the township goes and cleans the walking path around the lake, which is very nice, but our sidewalks are disgusting. I mean, and it, you know, you, you can't even, you have to take your shoes off before you even get to your deck, never mind before you get in your house, because you don't want it on your deck because it's disgusting. So. Is there any plan for that? We, we had we did have a geese dog, but unfortunately he just passed away. So we're we're trying to figure out what we're going to do to get another uh, yeah. geese dog down here. We are in the process, Mr. Mayor, of trying to get another geese uh, police dog down there. So. And that usually moves them yeah. out. So because when people walk their so. dogs, what happens is is they walk them away from the lake and onto our property, which actually makes it worse. Right. <laughs> Not that I have anything against dogs, but. The dogs are actually causing the problem even worse for the people who live on that side of the lake. Mm -hmm. so, well, part know. of the problem is that those geese are protected. You know, they're they're a protected species. We can't do we can't harm them in any way. Right. It's a federal offense. What we can, uh, DPW oils the eggs. They look for the nests right right around now, and they'll look for the nests and they'll oil the eggs, which means that the eggs won't hatch. So you have because when geese are born no, in a I've particular seen them place, do that. yeah, yeah the the geese. They'll, they'll just stay there. Some geese are migratory, but we have a like a permanent population that we it, that goes up and down depending on the season. Having the, the dog to chase them around, this is, it's not just like a regular dog on a leash. It was a the last one was a border collie. That's one of the fastest things you've ever seen. It just would just chase those geese. Chase How long them, chase ago was that? I've been living here seven years. I've never seen that ever. Not once. Except until two years ago. Mm -hmm. You had it until two years ago. Oh yeah. yeah. 
dog I never, guy, dog I guy. never saw that dog, I have to say, truth be known. And I work from home, and I stare out at the lake all day long from my upper level, and I've never seen a dog chasing. It was a sign from DPW the dog was out there constantly. Mm -hmm. And we're in the process of trying to get it reinstituted again. Yeah, another dog would definitely make a huge impact. And, okay. you know, we're very aware of, believe me, I walk over there, we have a dog that we sit sometimes, and we walk that dog around that lake, and it's exactly what you just described. It's really, I, you know, I appreciate the DPW's work cleaning, but, you know, it's still pretty yeah. disgusting, right? So, I mean, once we get a dog, and once the migratory season is over, because a lot of the times the population increases because geese are migrating either north or south, and what we really can deal with is our resident geese population, and that's what we're trying to look. The more we can reduce that by keeping them from hatching at all, mm -hmm. the better it'll be. Okay, thank you. Yes. I'm sorry, but I have to add to that. Last fall. Just, I, just I, your I, name I, and address. I, I, just I'm name and address first. Sorry. Name and address first. 606 North Lake Drive. Your name? Tom McCarroll. Okay. The geese last year, no eggs would take it, believe me. There was at least six couples. One of them had 12. When they hatch here, they're staying here. Mm -hmm. They make such a mess of my property, which we work very hard to keep clean. My neighbors, my neighbor to the left, to the right, it's disgusting. You go down North Lake Drive, Fifth Avenue, you can't walk on the sidewalks. You can't walk in the street. Then they just decide we'll lay in the street. And listen, it's up to me. I go right through them because... I'm sorry, but they're disgusting birds. Right. They need to do something about it. Like I said, we're a dog is not going to do it. Ten dogs, maybe, not one dog. There's really, like Councilman Brennan said, they are. You, well, you can't run them over. Well, okay. Chase them into the where, where they go hunting, so people can kill them. Well, because <laughs> they're ridiculously disgusting. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, Mark. I got a beautiful house. That's what I got to deal with. Mark Pfeiffer, uh, 319 Fifth Avenue. Um, I just uh, question: When we call 911, is that a Monmouth County 911, or are we getting Bel no, no, you go right to, to Belmar for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were the piece. Bradley that. Beach last week. We were out there at the pickleball courts. A woman fell, was bleeding from the face. And I know the person who called 911, he said it took them five minutes to get through. So I think the point is, you know, in my phone, of course, you have, you know, dial 911, but have your local police department at Belmar in, because you call Belmar Police Department, they're going to be there in a minute and get the... It comes right into us, us. yeah. Uh, uh, the other, the other towns have to go through Monmouth County uh, dispatch before so they it gets do? back down. And it takes a little bit longer, yeah. but we, we are 911. We, we put a lot of money into the dispatch system okay. so that it's immediate. And uh, Business Administrator Kirschenbaum is working now. Uh, we're one of the test sites, and I think we're going to get it for free, that uh, if somebody calls 911 from the beach, we can pinpoint them within three feet. So uh, we're, put, we're instituting that uh, uh, yeah. to start the process. But, yeah, we, we have 911, and uh, our guys respond right away. Yeah. It, it comes right into our desk. Yeah. Well, that's been my experience a couple of times, unfortunately. But, you know, those five minutes to that guy seemed like 30 minutes. Oh, absolutely. When, something, well, when you, when you need help, yeah, it takes, yeah, yeah you want an immediate. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well. Motion to close the public session and adjourn the meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming out.